welcome back to NRM 435, GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with a special field type called the date time field, which allows us to store dates, so month, day, year, and time, so hours, minutes, and seconds. So let's start by creating four points that we can work with. So the first thing I'll do is I'll use the Create Fishnet tool and we'll create a square and then we'll get the four corner points that square is composed of. So we use Create Fishnet. I'll go into this test time geodatabase and it'll be a polygon and it'll be one row, one column, so one square and 10 wide, 10 high. And I'll just start at 0, 0, and I'll go straight north. So 0, and then any y value that's greater than 0. So that creates our square. So then what we want to do is get the corner points the square is composed of. So if we search for vertices, here's the tool that will allow us to get the corner points. So we'll use the feature vertices to points tool and we'll output to the same geodatabase test time and we'll name our output corner points. So if we look at the table, there's actually five points. So we have our beginning point, which is the lower left-hand corner, and then our ending point, which is also the lower left-hand corner. So we can add a special type field, the date field, that can contain dates and times to any table. So let's add that date time field to our corner point attribute table. And then the type is date. So if we're in a geodatabase, this field can contain dates, so day, month, year, and it can contain time, so hours, minutes, seconds. If you go to a folder in a shape file, it can only contain dates. It cannot also contain time at the same field. So we're in a geodatabase, so we can put the day, the month, the year, the hour, the minute, and the second for each point. So we can use the field calculator and there's special functions that we can use with date time fields. So for example, we'll fill in our test date time field with whatever now is. So now is our current computer day, month, year, hours, minutes, seconds. So that fills in our current time. Let's say that we want to change a date for this last point, let's say it's on the 27th of February, not the 26th. So we can use the field calculator and enclosed in double quotes, we would have our date, the hour, the minutes, and then second, and then this is in the morning. So what I change here is it's not the 26th, it'll be the 27th. And I also change the minutes instead of 10, I changed it to 20. We can also use the date add function where we can add to time. So for example, we can use the object ID and we'll add that, let's add that as a second to each time. So the flag for second is going to be S for seconds. So we're going to add a second based on this field and we'll add it to our output field test date time. So right now everything's at 1034 seconds and then it converts to 1035 seconds. So two seconds all the way up to five seconds added. We can use negative values to subtract. So let's subtract by one minute so these values of 10 will subtract by one minute. So it would be negative object ID. M is month, so we use N as a flag. So we use the flag N for minutes and it's subtracted from each value, whatever this was in minutes. 
the flag H is for hours, so let's change this to hours H, and let's add one hour to each field. So it adds one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Let's add a day to each field. So we had one day added, two days added, three days added, all the way up to five days added. And let's add a month to each field. So M is the flag for month. So we added one month to five months to our original field. And let's add a year to each field. So the flag for year is four Y's, all lowercase. Let's go back in time, so negative. So negative one year to negative five years. So we go back in time. We can also extract parts of our date time field and put them in a short integer field. So let me add a field and we'll just call this part. So we can use the date part function. So we'll use the same flags to get parts of our date time field. So for example, give us seconds enclosed in double quotes from our date time field. So then it extracts the seconds. And let's do the same thing. Let's get the minutes. So lowercase n for minutes. And we get minutes. And let's extract the hours. So H for hours. And then we'll extract the day. So D for day. And then the month, so M for month. So lowercase m for month. And then we'll extract the year. So four Y's extracts the year. Okay, the other thing we could extract is what is the day of year? So for example, January 31st would be day of year 31. February 1 would be day of year 32. So to do that, we would use one Y. So that extracts the day of the year. So then we have the day of the year. And we can use the flag W, which will give us the day of the week, where day one is Sunday, day two is Monday, etc. So, for example, March 27, 2017, the day of the week was two. So that would be Sunday is one, Monday is two, so that would be a Monday. And we could also ask for what is the week of the year with two W's. So for example, March 27th was the 13th week of the year. August 4th was the 32nd week of the year. And we can use the date difference function to get the difference. So for example, how many days is it between this date and February 27th, 2018. So we would use the flag for D, and then the field containing the date, and then the date we want to subtract from. So in this case, it was 336 days between March 27th, 2017 and February 26, 2018. Another example, how many years will it be between these dates and 2020? 
So we'll change the flag to years. And then our date, we'll make it January 1, 2020. So it's three years from 2017 to 2020, and it's seven years between 2013 and 2020.